Hey friend, Chris Van Viver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today in our 30-day series, the second to last day in the series, I wanna walk you through 10 or so professional features that exist in Logic Pro 10. These are features that perhaps you're not familiar with, but I'm imagining if you're on the outside looking in, if you're a different DAW user looking at Logic Pro 10, you'd think, oh, that, that's pretty awesome. Of course, any best of or any top 10 or whatever is always going to be different to different people based on what you do day in and day out. So maybe some of what I'm going to point out is not applicable to your workflow, but nonetheless, they still exist in Logic. They're still professional. It's awesome. So let's bang right through this. So number one in our list of professional features that exist in Logic is that we have slip and rotational editing. Maybe you're not familiar with what these editing features are, but in a nutshell, Sometimes when we are editing our regions, we don't want to move the regions all over the timeline. Instead, we just like to keep the regions where they are and just move the contents inside the regions instead. It's not like flex editing. Let's dig in. So I'm going to hone in on this kick track here, zoom in, and I'm going to split up this section of the region. And this is important to the workflow, is splitting up the regions. So we have three regions now, what came before, what we split up, what came after, they're all part of the same region, just split up. And we're gonna go to the toolbar and make sure to set this nudge value to something that is meaningful to your workflow. I'm gonna leave it at division, but if you don't see this here, just right click anywhere in the toolbar and make sure to enable nudge value. Okay, cool. So let's now open up the key command menu, option K. We're gonna look up slip, and we can see here we can slip left or right using the key command control option left or right arrow. Keep that in mind since these are key command only functions at the moment. We're gonna select our region and remember, this is part of a bigger region, but we've split it up. Holding control option, I'm gonna move everything to the left. Check it out. Awesome, we're moving all of the contents to the left. We're moving it forward in time, but we don't actually move the region whatsoever and everything that came after is getting moved along as well because all this information is still remembered within the region. If we go in the opposite direction, control option right. Awesome, everything moves along. This can be a dramatic workflow enhancer when you're editing your tracks. You just split up the regions and start moving the contents within the region, and then you're saving yourself a lot of time and effort. Now let's try out rotational editing. I'm gonna split up this region here, open up the key command menu, and now we're gonna look up rotate. So now we have a key command for rotating. If you hold control, option, command, left or right arrow, check this out. Unlike slip editing, where when we move the contents, everything that's before or after these two kick hits are moved along with it, with rotating, check it out. Control, option, command, watch these three kick hits. And we're just moving these three kick hits around and around. This can be great for producing creative ideas, and this isn't just for audio regions. You can use this for MIDI regions as well. Second in our list is Logic supports ARA 2.0. ARA allows things like Melodyne and Vocaline to automatically populate without us having to sit there and play a whole track through and then have the plugin capture the audio. And it's such a dramatic workflow enhancer. So we're gonna go look for a vocal track, kind of zoom in down here. I have some backing vocals right here. Now let's take this out of freeze. Let's solo it. And let's just hear what this vocal sounds like. Gentle, gentle soul. Perfect. Let's now place Melodyne first in the chain. And this is super important. It has to be first. Go to Celemony and look for an instance of Melodyne with ARA in parentheses. Now check it out. In years before, we would have to play our entire track or region through and make sure to capture the audio. But instead, just hit play and stop pretty much back to back. Here we go. And just like that, our audio has been captured for all the regions on this track. So we can get right down to pitch correcting our audio with Melodyne if we'd like. Now we're gonna ditch Melodyne and we're gonna load up vocal line. And we're gonna load up the second backing vocal track as they reflect each other. And let's now go and load in the first slot, Synchro Arts, Vocal line project. Cool, so a dialogue popped up to let us know, make sure to read the instructions, you gotta hit play at least for a brief moment so these plugins can capture the audio. Make sure to put vocal line on this other track. 
Cool. So now let's select both tracks and hit play. I might experience a system overload. Let's see what happens here. Let's back it up a hair. Cool. Now check it out. We squash this up. We've selected every region on this track. This is an important detail. I'm going to hit capture guide for this track. Unfortunately, Vocal Line Project couldn't capture the audio because I had multiple regions selected and there was dead space in between these regions. So we need to do this again by just selecting only the regions that we're planning on using Vocal Line with. Cool. So I'll select these two. We'll hit play again. Okay, let's now capture. All right. And now on this other track, you can see that the guide track has been populated across Vocal Line instances. Let's now hit capture dub. Okay, so we got to go through this process again. Check it out. Capture dub. Awesome. So now we have both our guide track and dub track. And at this point, we can just hit process and everything will line up. Number three in our list is Logic has VCA faders and they're incredibly handy if you want to manage multiple tracks, even outside of track stacks together. In fact, let's collapse everything. And let's go to this drum track and this random drum track. And right here, I have my kick drum and I have this massive beat track and they're both part of the same VCA. And if you don't see this field for VCA, just right click and go down to channel strip components and enable VCA. And then from the drop downs, let's just select these other three tracks. You can create a new VCA fader. And right down here, all the way to the right at the very end of your project, we have our VCA faders. And if we use key command control T, we can even place the VCA faders within the tracks area so we can move them around. So we'll move this to the beginning of this track stack and check it out. We can adjust the level of these tracks independent of the faders or the track stack. Awesome. Number four in our list is that Logic has dual mono capabilities. Basically, you can pull apart your tracks, either left or right signals, or even mid or side. And this is for any plugin, doesn't even have to be a Logic plugin. In fact, let's take this massive beat track, or, you know, let's use this COD War track. Take it out of freeze. Gonna click on the plugin menu, and I'm gonna go down to a third party plugin. We'll just try out Retro Color here and check it out. We now have both a left or a right signal. And if we solo this, we can process these two sides independent from one another. And if we click on the gear or settings within a dual mono plugin, we can switch between stereo or mid side. So we can process the mid separate from the sides. Really handy. And not only that, but the channel EQ and the linear EQ in Logic already come with various options for processing from stereo, left or right, mid or side. Next up is that we have a loudness meter so you can meet broadcasting standards and also intersample peak or true peak detection. So let's unsolo everything. And in this particular project, I've made sure to set my track rather loud with processing with fat effects and the compressor. And we have our loudness meter and our level meter. So we can check both true peak levels and the integrated loudness. So if we play this chorus section here, check it out. Gentle, gentle soul, rhythm, soft hands, moving less signs from VHS Trouble on the marble top, lights out, and I'm home a lot. Make do with the rubble, elements and all the- Cool, and we can see the integrated value. I think some of the kick hits got messed up a little by me moving them around. But nonetheless, we're able to see the true peak value, which is at negative 0.1. It's in the safe zone, but it will even demonstrate to us values that go above zero as well. So let me just push the adaptive limiter loudness to a uncomfortable territory so we can see this. Gentle, gentle soul, rhythm, soft hand. So you can see we're hitting the red. So that means we got to back things off, but we could also turn on true peak detection here. And I'll set this over here so we don't have to listen to that kick drum. Check it out. Make do with the rubble, elements and old thermostat. Gentle, gentle soul, with them soft hands. 
And now we've solved our true peak detection issues. And both the adaptive limiter and the regular limiter have this functionality. And our loudness meter is letting us know how we're doing in integrated loudness. Next, I wanna to demonstrate to you that logic actually supports surround mixing. And to demonstrate this, let's go right here and set our output to surround. So now things have adapted, probably making a mess of this session, but nonetheless, we now have surround mixing. We have this panner that's adjusted for the five different speakers. And of course, you could go to Logic Pro 10 preferences, audio, and IO assignments if you want to adjust for a 5.1 system or 7.1, or you can see the different options. But now we can pan within this panner. And not only that, if we double click on the panner, we get this much bigger panner so we can adjust the relative left and right, move in and out, and go the whole way around. It's really amazing. And again, I'm just speeding through this because it's a lot to cover, but I just want to point these out so you can dig into them on your own. Next in our list, we not only have undo steps in the tracks area or the different editors, but also we have plugin undos and mixer undos as well. And I dug into this in one of my other videos, which I'll link in this video. But if we go up to edit, go down to undo history, we can see our entire undo history, which I have set to 100 undo steps. And we also have tabs for mixer adjustments. So go to the bottom here. Let's adjust this level right here and mess with the fader here. We can see we made an adjustment in the mixer. If we undo, boom, we've adjusted this fader back to its original position. We go to the adaptive limiter here, adjust the gain once again. Exactly the same with plugins, we can undo this step. So undo, perfect. So really anything across Logic is undoable, and you can even omit the plugin undo steps or the mixer undo steps if you'd like. Additionally, we have different list editors for more precise editing. And this could be events, so regions, or markers, which we can see, and we can adjust their positions or their lengths, or tempo, so we can make tempo adjustments and plug them in. If you're working with video, this probably is a tremendous help to be able to specifically edit markers and tempo and events based on different cues. And we can even adjust the time signature as well. I rarely dig into this, but I can definitely see how it would be helpful to others. Next up, I wanna open a brand new project and let's go to the finder here to my desktop. And I have a project called Thousands and we're gonna open this. And what we're going to open is a project that has both a thousand audio tracks and a thousand software instrument tracks loaded up. Now my MacBook and my iMac Definitely could not handle 2,000 tracks, but I just want to demonstrate to you that you can have thousands upon thousands of tracks in your session. And if you go to Apple's webpage for Logic Online, you can have a thousand external instrument tracks, a thousand software instrument tracks, thousand audio tracks, and 256 buses, tons of plugins. There's a lot of room to be creative and you're not being held back by Logic. And if we go up to Logic Pro 10, Preferences, Display, and go to Tracks, we can show track or bar number while scrolling. So check this out as we scroll. All right, now we know where we are in our session. So you know exactly where you are despite how big your session might get. Now number 10 on our list I think is very important and it's the ability to import project data from other projects into your sessions. I have a whole video that really lays the groundwork for how to do this. But real quick, if we open the project browser and if we go to all files, and I'm gonna to navigate to some projects. So we'll go to these mixes, click on this one, click on the project file, and we'll just hit okay. We can now see every track, every track stack, every plugin, all the routing, the type of tracks, and we can place these tracks in our sessions. In fact, let's just delete all of these tracks and we'll just select this drum track stack, select just a few tracks in it. Let's make sure to include the content of these tracks the plugins, even any sends, any IO, and let's just add it to the project. So just hit okay. And just like that, we've loaded this track with the plugins, with everything involved with this track stack. Again, I'll link the other video if you want a deep dive on how to do this for your own projects. But I would say that's a pretty pro feature and a much needed feature for transporting audio files and plugins and routing between projects. And there's really much more beyond that. You can score a video in Logic. You can even edit score and print sheet music for your musicians right from Logic. You don't have to pay for another product like Finale or anything else. In fact, if we open the Apple Loops, drag this right in, and let's open the notation. 
and boom, we have it right there. And you can add labels and your instruments and all that. But between these 10 or 12 different features, Logic has tons of professional features. And I'm sure you've seen throughout this 30-day video series, Logic has so much available to you for you to use right now. So I hope that was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week, I'm posting new videos, new emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much, and I'll see you tomorrow in the last day of this series.